So far, we've been talking about the Internet of Things. But the Internet's first thing was developed by both John Romkey and Simon Hackett, and it was an Internet-controlled toaster. And this toaster was a sunbeam, and it was connected to the Internet in 1990. And since then, there has been a gigantic proliferation of devices that are being connected to the Internet every day now. In fact, with so many devices now connected to the Internet, device organization and management has been one of the things that are of utmost importance. And this involves four key elements, pre-commissioning, commissioning, management, and decommissioning. So pre-commissioning is an initial configuration. Then it goes to commissioning once it's been pre-commissioned, where there's registration and setup and activation. And then once that has been set up, we go into the management phase where we monitor and manage what the device is doing. And at the end of the device's cycle, we decommission it, and this is called device deactivation. The first step of this process is pre-commissioning. This is when the device itself is given a set of credentials. And because it has a set of credentials, then when it is connected to a server, the server can recognize the set of credentials and said it's a valid device to connect to the Internet. Because pre-commissioning is given the device a set of credentials, the device can be registered with the server and we now have full control over it. Now it's worth mentioning that in the case of resource constrained devices such as ones that are microcontrollers with a limited amount of RAM and flash, the commissioning phase can be reduced to firmware over the air because the device itself is connected typically wirelessly so the firmware over the air allows it to do the commissioning phase and then the device itself can go into sleep mode for a specific amount of time. When the device has been commissioned it's ready for full-time use and the registration and communication has been established between the server and the device. Now this is going to be for the entire life cycle of the device from now on because it's had its pre-commissioning and commissioning and you can have very powerful devices connected or you can have resource constrained devices which end up in very hard places to to reach. It's very important the device are regularly managed and preventively monitored and what you need to do from time to time is change what they're doing by using firmware updates and upgrades of software by doing firmware over the air or software over the air updates and this allows it to then be continually upgraded to a point where it can deal with all the new things that you needed to do while it's being deployed for use in the field. At some point in the future certain devices in your network will have to be deleted and this involves decommissioning. Decommissioning means getting rid of any sensitive data that happens to be on that device before it's taken out of the network. And if you have proper management set up, you can selectively take out just the devices you want without affecting the rest of the network. Let's take a look at aspects of device management while the device is in the field. First of all, before you put it in the field, you have to take into account scalability and flexibility. Because even though you may have a small deployment of devices, eventually you may have a very large deployment of devices, and you want to avoid restructuring the whole system as it grows. So those sorts of design details should be taken into account as you're first setting up your system. The most important aspect of any deployment is security. Even for the smallest IoT deployment, you should have encrypted communications between the server and the device. For large scale deployments such as smart cities where you're controlling power grids and so on, you definitely don't want hackers taking control of those devices. So security is a very important feature that should be addressed right at the start of any deployment. For IoT deployments, there is device management standards that are used. Now the ones that are listed here are for dealing with devices that have limited resources such as a microcontroller that has a limited amount of RAM and flash on your network but they can also be used for larger devices as well that have more resources. Now one of these standards is called lightweight machine to machine and the communication between client and server uses UDP which stands for user datagram protocol and this type of protocol means it sends information but it doesn't check to see if the information has been received and UDP works with CoAP which is constrained application protocol again for microcontrollers as end devices that have a limited amount of RAM and flash now there's another one called MQT which stands for message queue telemetry transport 
which uses a publish and subscribe messaging protocol, and this is very useful for networks with low bandwidth. And if you've ever used Facebook and you've subscribed to something and you publish to something, the same sort of concept here is being used for message queue telemetry transport at a much smaller scale.